Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us online. Let's stand and sing and camp along the hills of light. The Christian soldiers rise. Faith is the victory. And camped along the hills of light, the Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies against the foe and veils below. Let all our strength be. saints above with shouts of triumph trod by faith they like the world with breath swept over every field the faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield faith is a victory faith is a victory oh glorious victory that overcomes the world Vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. That's exciting. That's exciting for a Christian to be able to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, the most powerful name in the world. Let's sing glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of light, glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. was the 
can say what verse 2 says I am so wondrously saved from sin amen, amen. I hopefully you can claim that tonight and brother Chris has a word for us well good evening and isn't it a wonderful day yeah uh, it's, uh, it's been a great week hasn't it and uh, we're just praising the Lord for souls being saved and decisions being made and the Lord wants to continue to do a greater work in fact he's calling right now well, you answer that call, and uh, so, and then after you answer, silence. <laughs> uh, let me mention a couple of things about the book table. Uh, there's some really good, helpful pamphlets that are easy to read, but so helpful in the Christian life. How Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, an incredible study in John and other passages in the New Testament, really very helpful. Uh, Jesus was our example in every area and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, once you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You need to allow him to be filling you and growing you. And as uh, we, met, we uh, heard last night, to be a soul winner, to be bold in our witness, we need uh, the filling of the Holy Spirit. And this is how great soul winners were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I like it because it takes different examples from different men and it tells some of those stories. And sometimes hearing their stories is just a great thing. Uh, then another pamphlet, winning our loved ones to the Lord Jesus Christ, really helpful. So how do you give the gospel Something that confronts truth is a truth confronter, you know, with something opposite of what they're thinking or believing, but and maintain that relationship. So how do you explain to others that you're uh, related to, you love, um, how to know Jesus Christ as Savior? So good uh, books back there. Bible Facts About Heaven has probably been the best-selling book of all time, just helpful for believers and also for those that are searching uh, on their way to heaven, there's a chapter, How to Know for Sure You're Going to Heaven. So good materials and everything comes in, goes directly back to the ministry. And as it does so, um, it will um, help us with our different outreaches as well. So I wanted to mention that. Let's be praying for tomorrow night. Very burdened about getting unsaved here for our final night together as well. And if you think to as well, pray for, I'll mention a little bit more tomorrow, about flying out to New York City on Thursday and a salvation video that we'll be filming out there. At this time, we can go ahead and have uh, my wife and kiddos uh, take out all the kiddos. So the fourth grade on down can go on out. The nurseries are open, and the children's uh, meeting is available. The kids Club is what we call them. And I think Brother Tom's coming back. <laughs> Amen. Happiness is to know the Savior living a life in his favor. Happiness is to know the Savior living a life within his favor, having a change in my behavior. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is a new creation, Jesus and me in close relation, having a part in his salvation. Happiness is the Lord. Real joy is mine, no matter if the teardrops start. I found the secret, it's Jesus in my heart. Happiness is to be forgiven, living a life that's worth the living. Taking a trip that leads to heaven, happiness is the Lord. hit that high note and I don't think anybody else sang the high note with me but you know we can find happiness in the Lord and I know there's people found happiness in the Lord this week amen right now we're going to have a duet on the piano you may be seated
Thank you, ladies. Wonderful rendition there of Send the Light. Appreciate that so much tonight. Let's all stand if we're able to stand tonight in honor of God's man and God's word. Excited about what the service is going to bring for us tonight and the message. And it's always been good. And we've had Brother Chris with us two times. First time that he came, we had three people get saved. And so far in this meeting, we had six people get saved. So we're grateful for that. So this is what revival is all about. And we're grateful for that. He's done a wonderful job in the preaching. And we're so grateful for the Spirit of God working in people's hearts and people bringing their friends and family to hear the gospel. And so let's listen up tonight as Brother Chris Miller brings us another message tonight. God bless you. Let's take our Bibles and turn to Daniel chapter 3. Uh, if you're trying to find that, if you find right in the middle, find Psalms and then go to your right. And, uh, and that's helpful. Uh, find Daniel chapter 3. Ezekiel is right before that, and uh, if you get to Matthew, that's too far. <laughs> so Daniel chapter 3, uh, it again has been a blessing. We're so thankful for what the Lord uh, has done and is doing, and uh, believe that he's going to do so much more. Um, you know, uh, I was just talking to even someone last night, and uh, the, the need of the hour, the need of our um, nation is the gospel, and I believe with all my heart that there is uh, a possibility, <laughs> a great possibility, that within our lifetime that God would send another nationwide revival that would affect all of our churches, gospel-believing, uh, preaching churches, that would uh, affect us in such a way that we could have a, a third great awakening. Folks, we're wide open for that, wide open for it. Um, and it's such a great need, and uh, we'll tell you more a little bit about that even tomorrow night. Looking forward to the service tomorrow evening. Daniel chapter 3, and as you read there, uh, let's go ahead and f start in uh, verse 14. The Bible says, Daniel four, uh, three fourteen. it says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship my, the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready at that what, what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So just a moment, what's happening? So what's happening is there's uh, ones that are um, uh, there to serve the king, and they're under this rule of another king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are believers in the one true God. And he says, we're going to uh, erect this idol, and you have to bow down. Well, they don't bow down to the idol when the music starts. And the penalty of this is to be thrown in the fiery furnace. Look at what happens next. Verse 17, it says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. The title of the message this evening is the three words, the first words in verse 18. But if not, but if not. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Father, I pray for your help in every individual here tonight. Lord, only you can take your word by the Spirit of God, penetrate our hearts, and apply the truth to every single believer exactly where they are. So, Lord, I pray you do that tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd stir ones tonight to make decisions in obedience and surrender to you. Lord, if there is one here that does not know Christ as Savior, help them to understand how to be saved. Fill me, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Years ago, when we first started in ministry, I started with a camp ministry called the Bill Rice Ranch. And I was on staff at the Bill Rice Ranch. And they were going on a special staff retreat to Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. How many have been to Gatlinburg area? Okay, wow, most of you have. And it's a tourist trap. You have all kinds of stuff. There's shopping and there's games and there's go-karts and there's paintball and laser tag and uh, simulated skydiving, which I really want to do someday. And uh, there's all, all kinds of unique museums and things like that. Well, when we're coming into town, I saw something else there. It was a real live bungee jumping tower. And I thought to myself, wouldn't that be neat? 
to see someone else jump off the tower. And I thought, well, maybe I'll get the opportunity to see somebody. And well, we got in, we had um, uh, some sessions and such, and they said, okay, in the afternoon, we're going to have some free time, and you could be able to do whatever. I, one of the guys wanted to go jump off this tower. I said, you're nuts, you're crazy, you're going to die. I want to come watch. And uh, so we got in the bus, and we went head to, headed to the tower, and, and he got up there, and he came back. He said, guys, guess what? At other towers, it's like $30 or $40 to bungee jump, but here it's only $10 to bungee jump. And uh, uh, all you need is just five people to jump. Yeah, sounds too good to be two. That's why. And, and uh, $10, but you need five people. And I said, well, there's no way he's going to get five people. And he gets a second one, and things are going great for the crazy guy. He gets a third one, and, and then he gets a fourth one. All he needs is one more person. That's right. Just one more person. He said, hey, Brother Chris, do you, you want to jump off the bungee tower? No. No, I don't. He said, oh, come on, don't be a chicken. Exactly. Pastor was there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's it. That's exactly what it was, but I acted like I wasn't. I took out my $10 bill, and I said, here, take it before I changed my mind. Uh, they took me back behind, and they weighed me and everything, make sure I was good for the, the strap. And I remember walking up. You know, that bungee, the bungee, bungee towel and going up those steps and, and uh, you know, every, every la layer, you know, every level, I was just praying, Lord, you know, help me. And I, I wasn't looking down. I wasn't looking down, you know, coming up here, this next one, and uh, coming up to the next one. And where the stairs ended, there's a small aisle way, and it goes over to the platform, and there's a worker there. You know the worker? The one that pushes you? And uh, so I'm over here. I, I'm at the top. Well... Before I came up there, the crazy guy had already jumped, and he's like, just, just remember one thing. I said, what is that? He said, don't look down. I said, got it. So, I mean, I hadn't looked down the whole time. I'm just looking straight ahead, you know, and I'm doing this. Well, as I'm walking across, you know what they're doing on the ground? They're going, hey, Brother Chris, look down. <laughs> I wanted to drop something very heavy on the little bitty heads. <laughs> In Christian love and uh, so I came over to the the platform the worker came out to meet me he hooks on the bungee cord which is about that thick and then there's a cushion around the bungee cord maybe about that thick and it goes up for maybe the first two or three feet and uh, he hooks it on then he says go put your toes on the black line it's pretty easy go put your toes on the black line go put your toes on the black line that was the first time I had looked down and literally my toes were hanging over the edge. He said, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say three, two, one, jump, and then you jump. He had this big smile. I'm thinking, he likes his job way too much. <laughs> and uh, he said, are you ready? I said, no, I do have a question. I said, this cushion around the bungee cord, can I hold on to it? He said, yes. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay, are you ready? Ready. Three, two, one, jump. I jump, I can't breathe, I can't scream, nothing's coming out, you know. My life is passing before my eyes, and, and I'm thinking, oh, there, that was a nice birthday. You know, I remember that Christmas, you know. <laughs> and then I start to go down towards the bottom, and then I could breathe again. You know, life is much better when you have oxygen. Well, I, they, I let go. They didn't tell me, though, in bungee jumping, what goes down must come back up and so it springs me back up and as I, on the way up I'm just my arms and my legs are going all around like this and and I get up there the second time and I grab on that cushion again and about pinching it into just right at that point someone takes a picture <laughs> and uh, it comes down a second time and on the third time it lands me so gingerly so carefully so nicely right into the air cushion Poof. <laughs> and I said in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I'd been praying the whole time. I was so scared. Oh, let me tell you, when I was up there, I had to make this decision. Was I going to just stay on that platform, or would I jump off and trust that bungee cord and depend upon that? Tonight, we're going to see that will you make the decision to jump off and to trust God and surrender to the Lord all of the direction of your life, every aspect of your day and yourself. The matter of surrendering and giving something over the Lord and trusting that to the Lord isn't the same as being saved. You see, just uh, think of it this way as a direction of a gift. 
if I have a gift here and I say, okay, I'm going to give it to someone and I hand it over to that person. I say, okay, Brother Tom, I'm going to hand you the, the gift. Okay, now I get it over there. It went from me to him. You see, salvation is the gift of God. So it's God's gift to us. And so salvation, did you know this? You don't give God anything. He doesn't. Now, if I say, okay, here's the gift. I need five bucks. <laughs> Oh, that would be nice. He's reached. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, or here's something else. You know, if he gave anything in the, the exchange, it wouldn't be a gift, obviously. So, you know, some people think, well, you have to surrender something to be saved. No, you do. You do not. You realize you give God nothing. Otherwise, you'd be paying for the gift. This gift has already been paid for by Jesus Christ completely. That's why he said it is finished. And so he gives you the gift. But now God says, now that you're saved. Now that you have the Holy Spirit in you, now that you have your sins forgiven, you have everlasting life, he wants you to give something back to him. And it's yourself. And this matter I, we're going to see tonight is not only a matter of trusting, just like jumping off and trusting that bungee cord, but it's also a matter of surrender. Look at this passage of scripture and let's notice three statements that they had here and uh, three different types of faith they had to, to trust the Lord with their, their own bodies and themselves. Notice, first of all, a simple faith, a simple faith in verse, um, if you would, verse 17. It says, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Notice that phrase, he is able to to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. This simple faith is depending on God's unlimited ability. You know, God is all-powerful, would you agree? The Bible says, Oh, Lord God, um, uh, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. God, th there's nothing too hard for God. He's the creator. He spoke, and out of nothing the world uh, uh, came into existence. You know, God it can save absolutely anyone. Isaiah 59, 1 says this, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Well, he can reach down and save anyone. He can save anyone. Look at uh, sometime Matthew 19, 25 through 26. You know, salvation is simply receiving this gift, not working for it like we explained this gift. But now that you are saved, God wants you to be revived. And God can revive absolutely anyone, any time. Sometime look up Ezekiel 37, 3, and how, um, how Ezekiel was preaching to dry bones, dead bones. I've preached to some congregations like that before. And I'm like, wow, they have clothes on. <laughs> but it's just some dry bones. You know what? God can revive anyone and any church. You know, when we first started off and I said, you know, I believe there's a great possibility within our lifetime that we could see a nationwide revival and resulting in a great awakening of the lost hearing and receiving the gospel. You know, for some, in the back of the mind, you're going, hmm, really? And you realize that God is able to do absolutely anything. So if you're here tonight and you haven't trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then would you trust him because he can save you? If you need to trust him in another area of your life, would you trust him? And just recognize this, that God is all-powerful, unlimited ability. Simple faith, depending on God's unlimited ability. What's the second type of faith? Secured faith. Secured faith. Look at verse 17 again. He says, but if it be so, uh, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will... Deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Do you hear that confidence? That security? That, that, that absolute concrete faith? What am I going to say here? I'm going to believe this. <laughs> this secured faith is depending that God will definitely fulfill a specific promise. It's depending that God will definitely fulfill a specific promise. Now, the, the word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Every single word we can believe and we can recognize is given from God to us. Isn't that wonderful that we can recognize when we have the Bible, we don't have just a book that contains the Word of God, but we have the Word of God. And it's a wonderful thing. Now, there's a Greek word for all that. It's just talking about the Word of God. It's logos. 
You probably heard that word, lagos. Oh, that's what that is. It's talking about the word completely. But you realize that many times God speaks to his believers specifically. And there's a specific word. It's called rhema. And God can give us a specific word for us. Now, obviously, God is going to take his word and speak to us through his word. Just like he showed many this week to be saved. Or many uh, that I need to be bold in my witness. Or I need to make this decision about the presence of the Lord. So God spoke to your heart. But he's using it through words that he to maybe Mary. Or Moses. Or Abraham. Or someone else. Now, that was specific to them, but then now God can take through his Holy Spirit and apply that to us where we can trust him. And I believe we need to take promises and look for promises and say, dear God, I'm going to trust you for specific areas in my life. Perhaps ones, things that you need to pray about. What do you need to pray about tonight? Maybe uh, there's someone that's away from God and you need to pray for them. Someone way away from God. Uh, they said that they've been saved, but they're in sin and they haven't been back into church and, and you're burdened for them. You need to say, dear God, help me with that and give me even a promise. Uh, Lord, I need to be a blessing and I need to influence these teenagers or these young children in the Sunday school class or this area over here. Or I need to make this decision and I need a promise. You need some direction. Some of you are trying to figure out a big decision, maybe wisdom or direction and a decision in your life. And you need to say, dear God, give me a promise. I absolutely love Romans chapter 4. The Bible says this in verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. <laughs> we see that Abraham became and came to the place where he was fully persuaded. That is that idea of secured faith based upon that promise. And I believe with all my heart that God can give us promises and we can trust him for specific areas in our life and pray for specific requests. You realize you need to pray specifically. Some of us, we pray so generally, Lord, uh, bless our church. What do you mean? How do you know if God's going to answer that? But if you pray for someone specific, this person, I'm praying for that person to come tomorrow night. There's someone specific I'm praying for to come tomorrow night. There's others I'm praying by name, specifically, d decisions. You know, and God can hear your request. You can do so, and God can, God, God can certainly hear you. Tonight, we say, okay, Lord, help me to be able to do so. And you can pray, and God can answer your requests, just like he answered for me for a pair of shoes. <laughs> You say, you prayed for a pair of shoes? I prayed for a pair of shoes. <laughs> now, if I um, needed to, I probably could have saved up over a few months to get a pair of dress shoes, but I needed a pair of dress shoes. I had some black ones, and, but I didn't have any brown ones. I said, Lord, would you help me to have some new dress shoes, but would they be brown? And Johnston and Murphy, and this exact brand right there, this model right there, and pointed it, beep, there it is. Put it in the cart just in case. No, I didn't put it. But I prayed about it. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for these shoes, and I'm not going to tell anyone else. I'm not going to tell my wife. I'm not going to tell my kids. I'm not going to tell any church member. I'm just going to pray. And I want to see if God will answer my request for a pair of brown shoes. I went to a church, and the assistant pastor's getting us set up. And I'd been praying for a couple of months about all this. And, and uh, he said, hey, uh, while you're here, if you have any suits that need to be dry cleaned, we'd like to do that. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. And he goes, also, if you need a pair of dress shoes, we'd like to get them. I'm just like, I'm stopping. He said, you what? He said, uh, if you need some dress shoes, we'd like to get them. I'm, I'm like tearing up. And all the guys are going, well, that's dumb. Why would you cry over a pair of dress shoes? All the ladies would be, yeah, I'm definitely crying over shoes. You know? <laughs> and... Uh, you know what? Why I was starting to tear up and choke up is because God heard my prayer. But then I got a little further testing. The pastor said, hey, let's go out and get your dress shoes. And, and I heard you need some. I said, yeah. And uh, so we went to a store and they didn't have them. He said, do you have a particular kind of mind? Yes. <laughs> Very specific. He said, well, let's go. We went across the street. They didn't have them. Went to another one. They didn't, ha they didn't have them the whole town. I said, look, let's just get some another pair. He said, no, no, no. <laughs> no, we didn't go to Walmart. <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> and so I said, well, why don't we just go someplace else, you know, go just get in one of these. He said, no, 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 we're going to get the pair of shoes. They, they had to special order them in. They came in the mail, and I'm wearing them tonight. <laughs> these are my prayer shoes. And every time I put them on, I think, you know, God hear, heard my request, and God hears my prayers, and he can hear yours as well. Why don't you pray and ask the Lord for things and say, dear God, would you give me a, pray, uh, a specific promise? Simple faith depending on God's unlimited ability. Secured faith, depending that God will definitely fulfill a specific promise. But finally, surrendered faith. This is where I like to see really the emphasis here tonight. Look at surrendered faith in verse 18. Daniel 3, verse 18. After he says, God is able and he will deliver us. In verse 18, it says, want to read the first three words out loud? Ready? But if not. Wait a minute. He just said, God is able. And he will. Why would he say, but if not? Is this kind of like a clause? Just in case God doesn't come through? I don't think so. He says, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So he's not back. They're not backing down at all. They're not cowering at all. They're saying, okay, God is able. Simple faith. He will deliver us. Secured faith. But if not, surrender faith. You see, we have this mentality that God's going to have to provide and he's going to um, uh, uh, move in a specific area how I want him. But you know, God does things differently than we do. Aren't you thankful for that? And God's timing is different as well. They had to come to this place. I don't believe this is a cop out where they said, dear God, you can have everything. Even if you don't provide for us, we will still stand for you. Surrendered faith. N notice three things about surrendered faith. Surrendered faith trusts when it's not easy. Was it easy for them to stand up and say, but if not, we won't serve, we won't bow? No, they're getting ready to go into a fiery furnace. Look at verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. So what's going on? So here's a fiery furnace. I don't know how, if there's like this platform or something that's over it, then they would throw them into it. But there's a fiery furnace that they were going to be in and be burned up as a punishment for not bowing. But the king made, it was so mad, he made it seven times hotter. And so now, as everything is looking around, I mean, they're going against the king. Um, they, they are taking a stand for all of this, but it is not easy whatsoever. But when you're trusting God, you can do those things that normally would not be easy for you. Now, some of you are saved brand new. You know what God wants you to do is to stand up for God and to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. And when someone says, hey, didn't you go over to, to that church? What was that all about? Well, let me tell you, I trusted Jesus as my personal Savior. And now I have eternal life. I know I'm going to heaven. What about you? Well, well, um, um, you know, then it's going to be turning the tides. You stand up for the Lord, but it's not your own strength. You just say, dear God, I'm going to surrender to you, even if I don't have uh, protection or anything else. You see, this surrendered faith is depending upon God unconditionally. Depending upon God unconditionally. And it trusts when it's not easy. But not only that, we see surrendered faith trusts when there's no evidence of deliverance. There was no, there wasn't even an ounce of evidence that they were going to be delivered. Look at verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats and their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Wow. They were thrown in. In fact, look at verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So here they are. They're grabbing the men. They're still tied up. They're still bound. All right, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They're not going, ah, we're not listening. 
we're not going your way. No, no, no. They're following. Okay, where do you want us to go? Over here? Fine. We're surrendered. We're standing up for God. We're not bowing down. And they, any back, you want to back down? No, we're not backing down. And the fire was so hot that the men throwing them in were killed. Now these three men fall into the burning fiery furnace. Actual flame that they fell into. There is not one time that there was evidence of deliverance. Now, for me, I would be way back here going, okay, Gabriel, come on down. You know, Michael, anytime now. Trumpet, sword, <laughs> white horse, you know, it'd be really nice right now. But God wanted them to do something. To go through the fire. And look what happens when they went through the fire. Verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. That's another word that's saying he was shocked. And rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men, three men, bound into the midst of the fiery furnace? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see how many men? Four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Here is this pagan king, and he's watching, and he's looking down at this fiery furnace, and as he's watching, he goes, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I, I thought we threw, how, how many did we throw in? I know my math's bad, but, uh, you know, with these big numbers, but how many did we throw in? We threw in three, right? Yeah, true, O king, three. I'm looking in there. And they're loosed, and they're walking around, and there's four of them now. And the fourth man in the fire looks like the Son of Man. Who is that? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's another way of saying it is the Son of God himself. And here, uh, he, was the, he said the Son of God. And as we see this, here's this pagan man, and God allowed him to recognize that was Jesus Christ in the fire there with them. Wow, how incredible was that? What do we learn from all of this? Even if there's no evidence of deliverance, just simply trust God and surrender everything to him. And maybe along your path, and maybe in your life, there's going to be some fire. What does a fire oftentimes represent? A trial? testing, tribulation of some sort in your life, things not going well. It's not your original plan. I didn't, I had this plan, but God said, no, I, I need you, you three to stand up for me. Okay, well, stand up. You're going to, you're able to deliver us and, and you will deliver us, God, right? Well, I will, but I need you to do one thing. I need you to go through the fire. But isn't it amazing when they went through the fire that was to be the illustration for us for testing and proving and trials that the fire actually loosed them <laughs> and they had the Lord Jesus right there with them. Have you been going through hard times? Have you had challenges? Would you say, you know, I didn't expect that to be in my life. I didn't expect that fiery trial. I didn't want that one. And maybe God is allowing you to go through the fire so you can be closer to Jesus Christ himself. My, uh, my mom had arthritis. Now, when you hear about arthritis, maybe you think, my hand hurts, and my elbow's a little, little stiff today, can't play tennis. No, no, no. My mom was bound to a wheelchair all the time. She couldn't feed herself. Uh, she couldn't bathe herself. Now, this was as she got progressively worse in the last several years of her life. My dad constantly was the caretaker for her. If she's laying in bed, she couldn't roll to her side at one particular point because it would be too painful. So she had to sleep on her back. She couldn't sleep with a comforter or a blanket. It would be too heavy because as her toes would be extended, up, sleeping on her back, she could only have a sheet. And if the sheet would pull too tightly, she'd cry out in pain. Literally, she had 
literally. Arthritis in her cranium, all the way down through every major joint of her body and into her feet. They wanted to replace every major joint that they could. Many specialists said that she's the worst case we've ever seen. And let me tell you, my mom, even though she was not perfect, and she was going through so much intense pain, and I felt so helpless. But so many times, she had a sweet spirit because the Lord Jesus was with her. You know, and if I had a headache, if I had a stomach ache, you know who'd be most compassionate about me? <laughs> it's my mom, who's bound to a wheelchair, who, who hurts and can't even write her own name now because her hands are so, so crippled. And she'd be, are you okay? Why don't we get something else for you? And I'd be laying on the couch, and it's okay, Chris. <laughs> now, I remember holding my mom's hand when she passed away and thinking for the first time in decades, I can finally hold her hand without hurting her. And she has no pain now. And I dare say, when she... See, when you pass on, the Bible says, when you are absent from this body, you're present with the Lord. You go immediately, and I believe you'll see the Lord Jesus right away. And when she saw the Lord Jesus, you know what I think? She recognized him very, very intimately because she saw him in the fire. Not physically, but he was spiritually with her. Let me ask, there are times where you're going through difficult times, look, will you just trust the Lord and say, God, even if it means a fiery trial, I'll trust you. And Jesus, I know now you'll be with me every step of the way. This surrendered faith trusts when it's not easy. It trusts when there's no evidence of deliverance. But finally, the surrendered faith trusts God with everything, with everything. Look at verse 28. The Bible says this, the Bible says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Do you see that? He, he recognized it. And have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. This literally changed a nation. The king set up a declaration say, we're going to worship their God <laughs> because he's the one true living God because of their testimony and how they did this and how God uh, uh, intervened. We see tr surrendered faith, trust God with everything. And how can you tell that? In that phrase, they yielded their bodies. What God wants from you? We say, well, God wants my talents. Well, sure, I could agree with that. Uh, God wants my abilities. Well, I can... I could probably recognize that and agree to my personality. You know what? God wants, and he says that he wants, is Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Because Jesus Christ has saved you. He's given you the gift. Now he wants you to give something back to him. And what is it? Yourself. And literally he says, your body. Your body. Every day. Dear God, here's my body. I'm not going to live for Chris Miller today. I'm not going to live for just me today. Lord, it's your body today. These are not my eyes. They're your eyes. So I'm not going to let junk come through them. These aren't my ears. They're your ears. So I'm not going to, I'm going to guard what's going to come in though, there. These aren't my hands, you see. I'm not going to fight anymore. They're your hands. These aren't my feet. I'm not going to go to the wrong places anymore. They're your feet. Lord, this is, uh, this is your body. The Bible actually says that. It says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your, your body actually belongs to the Lord now. He created you. He, that, that's proof enough that you belong to God. But he bought you back. He redeemed you and purchased you by saving your soul, paying for your sins by the blood of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Now he says, okay, 
Give me back something every day. And it's, my, it's your body. You know, you need to do so. I say, dear God, here's my body. And for some, just say, Lord, my direction and my daily activities. Think of those two letters. The words that start with D. My direction and my daily activities. So God, whatever direction. I'm not going to go this way. Lord, I'll go your way. I'm yielding my direction. Whatever you want me to do for work. Whoever you want me to, to uh, marry. Um, what do you want me to make this decision and that next decision? How I should conduct it, what I should do now in my retirement. You realize it's all God's. So you need to say, dear God, what's the direction? But then on a daily basis, daily. Lord, okay, help me not just to live for me, live for self, not even say, God, here's my body. Every day, why don't you have a little funeral? <laughs> and say, okay, we're going to have a living sacrifice. In a living sacrifice, someone has to be alive and someone has to die. Okay? The dying part is dying to self, saying, okay, I'm not going to be selfish today, but Lord, here's my body. I give it to you. I'm having a little funeral for Chris Miller. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, you can have my body, lock, stock, and barrel. Here it is. You know what? God literally wants your body. You say, well, well, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not that intellectual. How many of you uh, did, you're in school, or maybe you were in school, and, and you did well in school? Maybe not 4.0, but, you know, you did well in math, maybe science. You did okay and those things, decent in school. How many of you did decent in school? Okay. Some of you are just like, yeah, better, you know, the older you are, the better you were. And uh, I know some of you are kind of sneaking in there. Um, but, you know, some of you academically, you have those things. But does God just say academics? No. Um, how about um, music ability? You know, you could sing. Maybe when you could start choir again, you could be in the choir, do music ability. Anybody here, you say, I've got some music ability. Okay, that's great. Okay, now some are being shy now. And uh, so you got some music ability. Okay, what about um, personality? Some of you maybe got this outgoing personality. You can talk to a tree and uh, carry on the conversation, you know? And... Uh, uh, how many of you have a pretty good outgoing personality? Okay, the man in the bow tie back there does. And uh, I haven't picked on you at all, Brother Dan, this whole week. I'm really su surprised. And, uh, and, so, um, and so, yep, outgoing personality. What, what, what about the rest of us? What if you say, well, I didn't raise my hand. I, I didn't do great in school. I never got an A. I got Fs. I thought that was for fantastic. <laughs> D was for dynamite, you know? C was for correct. I didn't get much Bs. The Bs were for bad. A... I think A's for ignorant. And uh, you didn't even get the joke, you know, that's really bad. <laughs> you know, is it just for those that are intellect? No. Um, how about, <laughs> how about the, the music ability? So I couldn't raise my hand. I, don't have the, I can't play an instrument. I don't really sing. When I sing in the shower, it stops. I mean, it's that bad, you know? <laughs> it's really bad. Um, or perhaps for you, you say, Brother Miller, you know, when it comes to personality, no, I don't have the outgoing personality talking to the tree. I am the tree, you know. <laughs> you know, that's how bad it is. I, I can't talk to anybody. And, oh, you think, well, then, then God doesn't want me. No, 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 no. He doesn't say, give me your uh, great intellects and give me your great um, personalities and your great music abilities. He says, give me your bodies. Now, let me ask this. Can I ask and can you participate? How many here present tonight have, you have a body? Okay, very good. Excellent. You passed the test. All right. You know what? Then you qualify. Have you been giving your body on a daily basis to the Lord? This surrendered face says, Dear God, I'll trust you with everything. <laughs> you know, like when I was standing with my toes on the black line, I got to realize, can I jump off? You know, that bungee cord, it's able to deliver me. <laughs> it will deliver me. But if not, <laughs> that's when we come to the place where we say, okay, Lord, even if things don't go as I planned, I'm going to surrender to you everything. And Lord, you can have my body. Would you say, dear God, tonight, I need to make this decision, and I need to, on a regular basis, make the decision to say, Lord, I'm surrendering myself, my body, to you on a daily basis. You can have everything, my daily activities and my direction in my life as well. I'll do your will and not mine. Would you tonight say to the Lord, 
You're able. You will deliver. But if not, I'll still trust you with everything. Let's pray. Father, I ask for your help. Would you give it in a very obvious and a definite way right now as we look to you in this invitation? With heads bowed, with eyes closed here tonight, let me ask a couple of questions. First of all, for those that have been saved, if you trusted Jesus as Savior and say, I've already made that decision and I know I'm going to heaven. If you know that tonight, can you raise your hand? Say, I know I'm saved. I've trusted Jesus and I'm going to heaven. That's wonderful. And that's great. You can place your hands down. Several raise their hand. Is there anyone here that does not know about that? You say, I've not done that yet. I don't want to miss anyone. I've not made the decision to trust Jesus as my Savior yet, and I still need to. Okay, let me ask next. Who here would say, Brother Miller, I'm saved, but God spoke in my heart about trusting him. Maybe about a specific promise and praying about something. Maybe about surrendered faith, trusting him with everything and on a daily basis. And I just need to say, God, here's my body. And I need to be surrendered to you on a daily, continual basis. Lord, I want to say I'm fully given to you. If that's true for you, would you be willing to raise your hand just right now? I want to surrender myself as a Christian. God bless you. So many. You can place your hands down. You can place your hands down. Would you look this way? Everyone look right here. In just a moment, we'll stand. I'll pray. I'm going to ask as soon as we finish praying, if you raise your hand, would you step out and pray about that decision somewhere at the front? This isn't trusting Jesus to save you again. This is saying, dear God, since I'm saved and you trusted, you gave me eternal life, I'm giving my body back to you. Would you do that tonight? Everyone standing, let's bow for prayer. Father, I ask for your help. Would you give your grace and your strength right now? Help each one that raised their hand to make this decision, to respond in prayer. Lord, have tender hearts. Lord, I pray for your help with all of these areas. Lord, I pray. With their heads bowed and eyes closed as the pianist plays, would you step out and come just right now? God's spoken to you. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you know there's a battle. You know.